inhabitants of the area, the Ingrian Finns, knew that their roots were in Finland and that Finland was their ethnic and linguistic homeland. Nevertheless, the goal of Ingrian patriotism was not to become a part of Finland, nor was it to declare independence or even seek autonomy. The idea was simply to preserve and express the ethnic pride of the Ingrian Finnish people. The specific goal was to keep, maintain, enforce and develop Finnish culture, which was closely bound to Finnish Lutheran parishes. The aim of this presentation is to give a brief outline of the role of music in the process of the national identification of the Ingrian Finns in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. For this presentation, I have plowed through archival material on Ingria in the National Archives of Finland here in Helsinki. Finnish newspapers published in St. Petersburg in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, as well as related studies. Because there are no comprehensive sources or material for researching the topic, I have used methods of microhistory. I have tried to squeeze information from fragmentary material and solve a jigsaw puzzle of separate pieces. Well, at first, we need to get a little glimpse of history. Ingria is a Russian region that extends from the earlier Finnish border on the Karelian Isthmus to St. Petersburg and beyond, continuing all the way to the Estonian border. After the Treaty of Stolbovo in 1617, when Ingria annexed to the Kingdom of Sweden, there were voluntary resettlements by Finns from Savonia, and Finnish Karelia. Ingrian Finns were, and still are, descendants of these people. These emigrant Finns brought with them the Lutheran faith and the Swedish liturgy. After having been in Swedish possession, possession, possession for about 100 years, in the year 1710, during the Great Northern War, Ingria ceded back to Russia. Even though the city of St. Petersburg, founded by Peter the Great in 1703, was in the middle of Ingria, Lutheranism remained the principal religion and Finnish was the language most spoken in the Ingrian countryside. From a cultural point of view, there was a strong bond between the Lutheran church and Finnish language. These were the most prominent features of the people identifying as Ingrian Finns. When Finland was incorporated into the Russian Empire in 1809, connections between Finland and Ingria became even closer. However, Finnish Lutheran parishes in Ingria were not a part of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Finland. The administration of these parishes was unclear until 1832, when they became a part of St. Petersburg consistorial district, which belonged to the Lutheran Church of Russia, along with the Baltic, Baltic countries. I want to underline that until 1832, all the Lutheran churches of the various national groups in the Russian Empire were detached. But from that year, Fourth, the administration was concentrated in St. Petersburg, and in that process, different liturgical and ecclesiastical cultures were brought into closer contact with each other. And owing to this change, Baltic German influences spread to Ingria, and most of the leaders of the new Russian church organization were Baltic Germans. Nevertheless, most of the Finnish-speaking pastors in Ingria were still Finnish-born and educated in the single university here, first located in Turku and later moved to Helsinki. All the other pastors were educated in Dorpat, present-day Tartu University in Livonia, in the sphere of influence of the Baltic German tradition. 
From the 1840s, there were annual pastor's synods on St. Petersburg consistorial district, and in the same context also own meetings for Finnish clergymen of Ingria. In those meetings, the pastors discussed about the questions of public education. The same kind of discussion was going on at the same time also in Finland and the Baltic countries. Traditionally, both in Finland and in Ingria, teaching children to read was a task of church wardens. And I am using the word church warden to mean lukkari in Finnish, klokkare in Swedish. There is no exact English translation for this word. The words presenter, cantor, and parish clerk have been used in earlier related studies, but I find them all problematic. Presenter and cantor are not accurate because the post was not first and foremost that of a musician. Individual in this position had many tasks besides musical ones. Parish, parish clerk, on the other hand, sounds like someone who performs secretarial duties and is not a musician as, at all. So I use the word church warden, lukkari, klokkare. In the governorate of Livonia, the Valga Seminary was set up in 1839 with a mission to prepare teachers of primary schools as well as church wardens for Lutheran parishes. Here in Finland, the Jyväskylä Teacher Seminary was founded in 1863. Finnish clergymen hoped that church wardens would be educated in the same institution, but neither the administration of the seminary nor the Finnish Senate favoured the proposal. That is why four separate church warden organist schools were founded in Finland on the initiative of individual musicians. In Ingria, by contrast, in the same year of 1863, the Kolpana Church Warden and Teachers Seminary was established for preparing both teachers and church wardens, the same way as in the Valga Seminary in Livonia. In 1861, the emancipation reform by Tsar Alexander II abolished serfdom throughout the, Rus the Russian Empire. This meant more freedom for cultural purposes of the Ingrian Finns and started a national awakening among them. By the first part of the 19th century in Ingria, only pastors were educated and they were mostly Finnish born. But in the last decades of the century, primary school teachers educated in Kolpana became the new intelligentsia of Ingria along with the clergy. It was notable that these teachers were Ingrian born. That is why the Kolpana seminary became both the central place and the symbol of Ingrian nationalist thought. Teachers educated in Kolpana strove for teaching their pupils Finnish language, national view of life, and solid Lutheran faith. But what kind of tools were used for spreading patriotic ideas throughout the region? At least these listed things were put to use, and in the Lutheran parishes, or in close relationship with them, because the Russian rulers did not allow the Ingrian Finns to establish any kind of administration of their own for schools or culture, except the church. And I am now focusing on the last one, music. Already in the first part of the 19th century, both in Sweden and in Finland, as well as in Ingria, serious attention began to be paid to the development of church singing at that time of a rather modest standard, if not downright poor. It was the church warden's task to conduct church singing, but few churches had an organ, and church warden's ability to conduct was very limited because there were no music institute to educate them. Most of the church wardens were self-trained. In fact, for the most part, the office of church warden was hereditary passing from father to son. In addition, the church wardens had many other duties which had nothing to do with music. At the Kolpana Seminary, the goal first and foremost was to educate teachers for primary schools. 
educating church wardens was not considered important. That is why music education was meagre. Only church singing and organ playing were taught, with figured bass added later. It is notable that in Kolpana, the singing repertoire, both solo and four-part, included only religious and patriotic songs. There were no vocalizes, for instance, at all. Nevertheless, there is no need to underestimate the importance of the teachers and church wardens educated in Kolpana for the Ingrian Finnish song movement. They were the main figures who established and conducted choirs and brass bands in their various localities. Pupils of the Kolpana Seminary sang in four-part harmony as well, even before this skill was included in the curriculum. The reason was the rising enthusiasm for choral singing that spread quickly and widely in Ingria in the last decades of the 19th century. The, the first choir, or song society, as they were often called, was founded in the Markova Järvisaari Paris in 1865. The founder was a vicar, H. A. Piespanen, who purchased psalmodicons and taught people to play them. When the standard of church singing began to rise, musicians began rehearsing four-part choral singing. So psalmodicon is virsikannel in Finnish. Soon following this example, many church wardens and teachers founded choirs and brass bands. The repertoire of these choirs can be divided roughly in, into two categories, religious songs and Finnish patriotic songs. Most of the choirs sang in almost every notable religious and secular occasion in their own locales. Their task was also to support congregational singing during the divine services on the most important feasts of the liturgical year. For this reason, they also practiced unison choral singing as well as four-part singing. Because of the close historical and cultural connections, the Ingrian Finns were also interested in the Estonian and Finnish song movements. The first Estonian National Song Festival was held in Tartu in the summer of 1869. Here in Finland, the first song festival was organized in 1884 along the lines of the Estonian example. In 1891, the choir of the St. Petersburg Finnish Song Society, Pietarin Suomalainen Lauluseura, conducted by Moses Putro, participated in the Finnish National Song Festival in Kuopio. Moreover, in 1898, the Keltos Men's Choir, Kelton Miesköri, from northern Ingria participated in the Kirvu Song Festival in the Finnish part of the Karelian Isthmus. The choir was joined by Moses Putro, who, after the festival, announced in the newspaper Inkeri that the following summer the same kind of song festival would be held in Ingria. It is interesting that in this article, Putro professed a preference for unison singing and instructed every church warden and teacher to practice it. According to Putro, there were only a few choirs able to sing four parts in Ingria, the reason being that there, were, there was no need to organize choir competition in the first West festival. So the first Ingrian song festival was held in Skuoritsa in June 1899 with about 50, 500, I mean 500 singers, not 50. The repertoire consisted of hymns and other religious songs, Finnish folk songs and patriotic songs, as well as songs composed by Moses Putra. The song festival was organized by the Temperance Association Inkeri and a local Lutheran parish. The next song festival took place in Tuutari in 1901 with over 600 singers and players. In the third festival in Venjoki in 1903 participated about 800 singers and players. But in Tyro in 1908 only 300. After the fifth festival in Kelto, 
uh, at the fifth festival in Kelto in 1910, there was also a theater play and competitions for sport associations. But singing no longer aroused such enthusiasm as before. There were only about 200 singers and players. Perhaps the reason was that the Ingrian Finnish people was politically divided. At the beginning of the 20th century, the bond between the Lutheran Church and Ingrian Finnish national identity started to fray. Even though the Kolpana Seminary was still maintained by the Lutheran Church of Russia, many teachers who had been educated there began to be critical of the Church. In their view, the main spirit in the Church was so narrow-minded and old-fashioned that it was no longer suitable for educating well-informed future citizens. Some of these teachers also became members of the Social Democratic Labour Movement. In 1907, the Socialists founded their own Finnish newspaper, Neva, and tried to spread their critical views about the Lutheran Church. It is important to know that the gap between socialists and other Ing Ingrian in intelligentsia was not as deep as it was in many other countries. Both sides largely had the same goals and the same tools, the main thing being to maintain and improve the, the Ingrian Finnish culture and inculcate a sense of nationality. And on both sides, singing was considered an efficient tool to infuse the minds of the common people with nationalist goals. Both groups also considered song festivals important enough from the patriotic point of view that they wanted to organize them again and together. A natural opportunity was the 50th anniversary of the Kolpana Seminary in 1913. So, the sixth national song festival took place in Kolpana with almost 800 singers and 80 brass instrumentalists as well as two gymnastic associations and a folk dance group. Both the socialist and the church supporting newspapers emphasized the feeling of togetherness and expressed a desire to organize new festivals with the same enthusiasm. Unfortunately, by this time the Russian government had begun to restrict the rights of national minorities and it was impossible to organize such gatherings anymore. The last Ingrian Song Festival was held in Tutari in 1918 after the revolutions under the restrictions by the Bolshevik party. A major figure in the improvement of Ingrian, Ingria's music was Moses Putro, who first obtained his degree and then taught for four years at the Kolpana Seminary. He continued his studies at the St. Petersburg Conservatory and worked then both as an organist in St. Mary's Church and as a teacher at the Finnish Church School in St. Petersburg. Putro was a journalist as well. He published a newspaper and wrote patriotic articles. In 1872, Putro founded the St. Petersburg Finnish Song Society and conducted the choir until his death in 1919. He edited four choral collections for Ingrian Finnish choirs. Putro was also the author and composer of the song Nose Ingeri, Arise Ingria, which was considered the national hymn of Ingria. In conclusion, Ingrian Finnish national, nationalism had its own peculiar features. Nevertheless, it was part of a much wider movement going on across the whole of Europe. Even though nationalism always appeared in the late 19th and early 20th centuries in a local context, the phenomenon itself was transnational. The Ingrian Finns often felt that they were only a small group of people located in an outlying region, speaking a foreign language and following a different religion from the majority of people in their country. Still, they were not isolated from the Lutheran Church in Europe, nor from the nationalist ideas and movements on the continent. As many other nations and countries, Ingrian Finns created their own national symbols to manifest themselves 
to the world as a national community. They had their own flag, a coat of arms, and a national anthem, Nose Ingeri. They also recognized the power of music and used it, similar to many other nations. But the peculiar feature of the Ingrian Finnish nationalist movement was how closely it was bound to the Lutheran Church. Thank you.